Welcome back. Let's do a maximum power transfer problem. We're given this little circuit right here. couple of uh, independent voltage sources here and a bunch of 4 ohm resistors sprinkled around everywhere. Everything's 4 ohms in this guy. There's a dependent voltage source here given by V sub phi and V sub phi is the voltage across this 4 ohm resistor down in here. So here's terminal A and here's terminal B and you're given a load resistor here just called R. And you're asked to find the value of R, you know, such that the power in R is maximum. That's what you're asked to find. Now, this is a maximum power transfer problem. So what that basically means is that first we need to find the Thevenin equivalent. So if you have if you have a circuit that you're modeling with with a Thevenin equivalent circuit, so here's the here's the Thevenin equivalent circuit that we're going to come up with, right? It's going to have a, this these two guys. And you're going to hook up a load resistor to this thing, then if you graphed the, the value of this load resistor R versus the power in R at uh, you know at zero uh, at zero resistance you basically have a short circuit so there's no power going through that and then at, at infinity you basically have an open circuit so there's no power in there but as the as you change the value of R the power being transferred to R is going to increase up to a maximum and then it's going to fall down like this and be asymptotic to the to this act to the uh, x-axis R. And so it'll reach a, a maximum at, a maximum power will be, you know, leaving this guy when R sub Thevenin equals R. So this is P, so P max happens when the value of R is equal to R sub Thevenin, when these two resistors are, are equal. Okay, so uh, at maximum power transfer, half the, half the power is being is being uh, lost in the in the in the um, this circuit or, right over here. Half of the power is being lost in the well. Let's call it the supply circuit, and then half the power is being lost in the load R. All right. So when you see a maximum power transfer problem and you're given this stuff, you need to you need to calculate the Thevenin equivalent. All right, now when you do the Thevenin equivalent circuit, there's two steps to that, right? There's one, you need to calculate V Thevenin, and that's a problem all by itself. And then the second thing you have to do is calculate R Thevenin. And there's a variety of methods you can use to do each one of, the, one of these. We're going to use node voltage for this guy. And we're going to use I sub short circuit for R sub Thevenin. All right, so the first thing we need to do, we're going to calculate the Thevenin equivalent, and we're going to start by calculating V Thevenin using node voltage. So back to this thing. When you calculate the Thevenin equivalent circuit, V sub Thevenin is what's seen at the terminals here. In other words, V sub Thevenin is the open circuit voltage. Kind of by definition, that's what V Thevenin is, the open circuit voltage. All right, when there's an open circuit here, it means there's no current flow through this resistor, so there's no voltage through this resistor. So you're seeing the V Thevenin source, you're seeing that at the terminals. So we need to open the we need to open up this circuit here. That is R represents the load, but to calculate the Thevenin equivalent, we have to take the load out. All right. So um, 
That's why we want to redraw this thing. A lot of redrawing. You don't want to just scribble a whole bunch on, on the first drawing because it, it's, you know. Now we still got to do the mesh thing. That would be, it would get really messy if we did it that way. So we'll take this guy out. There's A, terminal, and all these four ohm guys are here still. This guy's here, and this guy's here, and this guy's here. Oh, I'm kind of running out of paper already. And here's the 20 volt, and here's the 100 volt. And here's our V phi guy given by this V phi down here. Okay, so um, this is the open circuit here, across which is going to be V7. And so we're using node voltage, so this will be zero volts down in here at this terminal. And we're rising up, we have, we're rising up V7 because we have V7 and across these two terminals. So this node is V7, and we'll just call that node v7 there's another node here let's call that v or uh, you know what i'll call it v1 why not and there's another node here which i know it's a hundred it's a hundred volts because i'm zero down here and i'm rising 100 volts across this this uh dependent ind or rather independent voltage source here okay and um yeah so the second thing we do with node voltage well first you label the nodes right then you need to label all the currents uh, so let's see we have to start guessing on some current directions here and these are really just total they're total guesses like well, i'm going to guess down on this guy which is completely a complete guess and we'll guess this way on that guy and we'll guess oh i don't know let's guess this way on that guy so we've got, uh, for V1 node, we've got a current coming in, a current coming in, current, co current coming out. It's fine. They're just guesses. And then this one here, we need to guess on this current. Well, there's only one wire through here, so don't make things more complicated. Guess the same direction. It's still a guess, but we want to be consistent with the, uh, you know, what's physically happening, the current going through that. And hopefully these are correct guesses, and we'll know if we get positive values that we guessed correctly. Um, so this will allow us to write two node equations, and let's do that and, and look at them and see what, what happens. So the V7 and node, node voltage equation. So what you're doing for node voltage is you're summing the currents, and so you're using um, you're using V terms and you're using I over R. I'm sorry, you're using I R terms by Ohm's law. These are the two terms, and um, let's use. Um, Let's use in to be negative and out to be positive. So we need to express each one of these currents at, at V7 in here, at V7 in node, in terms of either a V or a... Um, whoops! Whoops! We're summing the current, so they're I terms or they're V over R terms. Sorry about that. Whoops! Okay. Hope that didn't mess you up too bad. Uh, so we need to express each one of these currents either as an I or a V over R term. So um, we need a potential difference here. We have a resistance here for this current. We have a resistor here. We need a potential difference. And I have a potential here, uh, but then it's rising by V phi. So at this, at this node here, the potential, potential here is 100 plus V sub phi. Because I'm starting here, let's start down here. We're, we're rising 100 because we're going minus to plus through this 100 um, volt source, and then we're rising again by V phi, because we're going minus to plus on this V phi, across this V phi voltage source. So the current, the voltage at this point is 100 plus V phi, and the voltage at this point is V phi. So this current, this current right here is the potential difference, which is 100 plus V phi minus V theta, or thevenin, over four, there he is. And the current, this guy, is the potential difference, V sub seven and minus V one over four. Those are the two currents, we just sum those guys. So this guy's coming into the node, so it's negative, and the quantity is 100 plus V sub phi minus V sub seven and over four. And this guy's coming, this current's coming out of V seven and node, so it's positive, and its quantity is V sub, 7 and minus V1 over 4. 
That's it, those sum to zero. That's, those, that's the first node voltage equation. The second one, we can write it at node V1. So we've got um, this guy coming in. So it's going to be um, it's going to be negative, and the quantity is the this potential difference one hundred minus v one over four. So one hundred minus v one over four. Then we've got this guy coming in, so it's negative. This guy, and the quantity is this is this expression. So it's v sub f n minus v one over four. Then we've got this guy leaving, so it's positive, and um, we need an expression for this guy right here. And so we need a potential difference on either side of this four ohm resistor. So here we have zero volts and we're rising uh, from minus to plus, uh, or rising by 20 volts. So this point right here, this point right here is, is, uh, is, 20, is 20 volts. So the potential difference is V1 minus 20 the potential difference across this 4 ohm resistor is V1 minus 20 over 4. It'll sum to 0. So I have two equations and three unknowns, V7 and V5 and V1. So I need another equation. And I can get one at V5 here. Um, V5 is, well, it's the potential difference between these two nodes, right? And so here we're, we're starting at zero, we're rising 20, and then we're rising V phi. So this potential difference is just V1 minus 20. That is V phi, V phi is V1 minus 20. Okay, because, you know, starting at zero, you're going 20 higher, because you're going from minus to plus, and then you're going to another t V phi higher, because you're going from minus to plus. So we're here we're at V1, and then we're dropping by, uh, um, by V5. And a couple different ways to think about it, but this is the, this is the equation. So I'm not going to do the rest of the algebra, but you could put this in standard form. You know, you'd have V1 co uh, constants plus V2 constants plus V5 constants equals some constant. And uh, then stick it in your calculator, and you're going to get you're going to get uh, these answers. You're going to get V sub 7 and equals 120 volts, which is one of the things we want. Well, that's actually the only thing we want. That's, that's for process one here. We're using node voltage just to find this. But the other, other answers spit out that we don't care about, really. But 80 volts will, split, will get spit out, and V sub 5 will get spit out as 60 volts. OK, so that's process one. That's finding. V sub theven, and V sub theven is the open circuit voltage. So you remove the load resistor R and you calculate the open circuit voltage. And generally speaking, there's a variety of methods you could use to calculate this open circuit voltage. Here we used node voltage because that's that works for this particular circuit. If it was a very simple circuit, you might be able to use something like voltage division or something to calculate this this open circuit voltage. But anyway, so that's step. Step process one. All right, let's do process two. We want to find R sub thevenin now. So we're going to use the uh, short circuit method. Just because we can. Like, well, so we have a uh, dependent voltage source. We have a diamond here. So when you have a diamond, then you have two choices of method. You could use test source method, or you could use short circuit method. And those they're both a little bit different. Go back, look earlier in your notes on the differences between those two. But in this guy here, we leave the uh, these uh, independent circles. We leave those guys, and then we short out across AB. And uh, R sub thevenin is going to be uh, v sub theven, in which we found already over I sub short circuit. So we need we need I sub short circuit. That's a, uh, we need the value for I sub short circuit, and then we can use v sub theven and define R sub theven. So we're going to redraw this original circuit, but now we're going to short out across terminals A B. 
So we short this out and I should sort circuit will have this direction, which is the direction comes from the method, um, which, you know, you could think back to, back to here, the, the I should short circuit method. Um, when you have a, um, when you have a Thevenin and circuit, if you have this potential here, then, uh, and you short this, well, the current's going to go that way. So that's where this, this, this direction comes from, from, from here. All right, so the rest of the circuit, draw this guy. Okay, we draw this guy. Now we want to solve for I short circuit. So mesh current will work here. Okay, it'll it'll uh, it'll work. So we've got three loops inside here. There's also a loop around the outside, but we typically don't use that. We've got three loops, and we'll just choose clockwise just to be consistent. Um, just to be, well, it's really kind of arbitrary. I'm just being mechanical by choosing clockwise directions. Um, so let's label these guys. So this guy's going to be uh, I sub short circuit. I guess I could, now I'm switching to a lowercase i. Same thing. And Let's call this um, let's call this loop I1 and we'll call this I2. I want to use lowercase i's because it's a little easier to write. So I1, I2, and I should short circuit. So we'll write three mesh current just to review the method here to because I have you know I get mixed these up. I mixed it up a little bit earlier, right? So when you're doing mesh current, you're summing the voltages. So your terms are um, to voltages around a loop. So your terms are going to be V's or they're going to be IR terms. So that's the thing I, mi I mixed up a little bit. I messed up a little bit earlier. And then we have superposition. And the superposition applies to the IR terms. Okay, if you have a V, typically it's a total V. But if you have an IR, it's a partial IR. All right? So we'll, we'll see that in here. So we're, we're, let's just write mesh current equations for each one of these loops, I1, I2, and I should short circuit and see what happens. So we go around this guy right here. I have a voltage here. Now that's the total voltage, no superposition here, but just the total voltage. So it's gonna be oh, minus 100, and it's negative because I'm coming into the negative terminal. Okay, then the, the two resi uh, resistors are gonna be positive, 4I1 and 4I1. So these are the, and I like to, these are the primary, um, you know, effects due to I1. Uh, I like to group those. As these get bigger and bigger, grouping stuff help, can help you a little bit. Okay, then um, we have the total, the, the uh, we have the total voltage, 20. And that's positive because we're coming into the positive terminal. Now we need uh, now we need uh, now we need to apply superposition for the voltages across the shared resistors. So this resistor here is shared, so it's going to be four I sub short circuit, and it's going to be negative because the current directions disagree through through that resistor. And then we're going to have this shared component, and that's going to be 4I2, and it's going to be negative because the current directions disagree through, through that element, and those sum to zero. And I forgot a one right here. One, one, I1 and I1, that's these two, these two resistors, and then the 20 and the 100 are those two things. Then superposition on the shared element and the other shared element. Okay, that's that. So that's the mesh current equation for 
loop i1. We can write one for loop i2. So we, uh, we go around this loop. We're coming into the negative terminal on uh, this v phi. So it's negative v phi. And then the four resistors are just 4i2 plus 4i2 plus 4i2. These are the primary effects due to, due to i2. Then we need to subtract out the effect of the shared resistor. So there's going to be 4i1 and another 4i short circuit. And these terms are negative because the current, uh, these two currents disagree in their direction through this resistor. And these two currents disagree in the direction through this resistor. And those sum to zero. Okay, we've got one more loop. We've got the I short circuit loop. So we can write a node voltage equation for that. So we're coming into the negative terminal on 20 volts. So it's negative 20. And um, then we've got this 4 and 4. So it's going to be 4i short circuit plus 4i short circuit. These are the primary effects due to i short circuit. Then we have to take into account superposition on these shared elements. So it's going to be 4i1 and 4i2. Um, and these are both going to be negative because so this 4i1 term comes from the voltage effect due to the i1 mesh current, which is shared by this 4 ohm resistor here. Okay, so you do 4i1 and you look you compare the directions of these currents and in this case they're opposite so you, you have them a negative sign and then this this resistor is shared between these two currents so you have this term this 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 represents the voltage effect due to i2 and one of these is the voltage effect due to i short circuit through this guy so the combined effects of those two that's superposition i sub short i sub short circuit has a voltage effect on this resistor and i sub 2 has a voltage effect on that same resistor so you, you sum them, or in this case, you, you take the difference because the currents disagree. That's the idea of superposition, is that the voltage effects due to each mesh current are, are cumulative, or you can add them up. Um, let me just check this over here. So I got minus 20, 4i short circuit and 4i short circuit. That's, oh, there should be another one, right? No, that's just these two, just these two resistors, yep. Then superposition is the shared... Uh, resistor shared with this other loop over here and the resistor shared with this loop up top. Okay, so I have uh, three equations and how many unknowns? I got uh, I1, I2, I short circuit, that's three, and B5, I have four unknowns. So I need another equation and I, I can get it just by um, looking at this V5 right here. So V5 is the, the total voltage across this this branch. And remember that branch is due to, or that, uh, that voltage is due to two mesh currents. So um, bottom line is uh, V sub phi is equal to the resistance times the total branch current, I1 minus I short circuit. All right, so we have loop currents, uh, also called mesh currents. You have mesh currents, right, and then you have branch currents. And here, uh, when we wrote these guys, we were using the, the mesh currents. So that's why we, we were using superposition to add the, add the IR effects together. But, you know, typically in these problems, when you're given a voltage, it's the total voltage. I mean, that's the case for these supplies, right? This is the total voltage in here. We just used 120, just, you know, the total voltage. We didn't use superposition on those. So uh, what I'm saying is... A, Typically, voltages, when they're given in these things, are total voltages. But IRs, when they're given in this thing, they're uh, partial voltages. So anyway, the total voltage, V sub phi, is due to both of these um, mesh currents. You have to uh, take the difference. And you know, you have, I've got I1 going in the positive to negative, so that's... At, um, providing a positive voltage. And then I've got I short circuit going from negative to positive, so that's subtracting that. That's why it's I1 minus I short, short circuit. This is just Ohm's law, right? This is R, and then this is I. But it's the total, 
This is the branch current. Equals the sum of the mesh currents. Okay, so four equations, four unknowns. Your handy dandy calculator will tell you the following. It will tell you that I1 is 45 amps and I2 is 30 amps and I short circuit. The only thing we really care about is 40 amps. That's what we care about, that guy. And it also tells you that V5 is 20 volts. Your, put these in uh, standard form, enter them in your calculation device, and you will get these answers. So, okay, so we uh, we did two separate problems here so far. We did V sub thevenin, and we you know we opened this up, and we used node voltage, and we found this number right here. And then we um, sh did another problem where we shorted this guy out, and we used mesh current, and we got this number right here. And we take both of those two numbers, and we can, uh, uh, you know, uh, so um, the last thing on the method here, I guess I'll squeeze it under this paper here, but by the, the, the uh, short circuit method says, it says that R thevenin is given by V thevenin over I sub short circuit. So it's going to be 120 volts over 40 amps, which is, what is that? Um, and it's just, that's three, right? Three ohms. Okay. We have V Thevenin, R Thevenin. We have the Thevenin equivalent circuit. So the Thevenin equivalent circuit is V7 and N R7 and 3 ohms. There it is. And the condition for maximum power transfer is when the load resistor R sub load equals R sub thevenin. R sub thevenin equals R sub load. This is this is max power transfer. This thing back here, remember that? So yeah, so now we just gotta solve for the you know the power in this. So the you know, the answer um, is three ohms for the uh, we're trying to find the resistance, the, the value of R for maximum power transfer. It's three ohms. So um, the power, though, we need to calculate the power, the actual power leaving this thing. And uh, let's see, we've got uh, P equals IV. We've got P equals I squared R. And we've got P equals V squared over R. Let's use V squared over R because we've got this already. So the this voltage right here, it's, it's it's gonna be 60 volts right because um, you know the resistors are the same if you used voltage division that's what you'd find so we have um, you know we have the voltage across this and and the resistance so the power in uh, R sub L max is just use V squared over R it's gonna be 60 squared over 3 it's going to be uh, 1200 watts Okay, and the R value itself is 3 ohms. That's it. Kind of a mess, huh? All these pages in there. All right. Hope that was useful to you. See you next time. Bye.